So I want to talk about Marjorie Greene, who is a congressional candidate running in Georgia's 14th congressional district, and her primary race just took place. We've talked about her before on the show, but in case you don't remember her, allow me to refresh your memory. President Trump declared Antifa a domestic terrorist organization. I have a message for Antifa terrorists. Stay the hell out of Northwest Georgia. You won't burn our churches, loot our businesses, or destroy our homes. I'm Marjorie Green, and I approve this message. America is the greatest country in the world. We need conservatives in Washington that will keep it that way. I'm running to stop gun control. Open borders, the Green New Deal, and socialism. Socialism is never going to recover now. That was devastating. These ads are getting so goddamn stupid. And at the rate we're going, like, I wouldn't be surprised if by the next election cycle, somebody writes Medicare for all on a piece of paper and then literally takes a shit on it and then pulls up their pants, stands up and then looks directly into the camera and affirmatively says, that's what I think about socialized medicine. Like, <laughs> that's where we're headed. Like, that's literally where we're headed. And um, if any Republican actually does that as an ad, um... I think that I am due some royalties for that. Now, <laughs> the reason why we're talking about this lunatic is because, believe it or not, she just won her primary campaign against another Republican who is also pretty far to the right. But I mean, he's arguably more moderate. He's not as insane as her. He's a neurosurgeon. But voters in, you know, uh, Georgia's 14th congressional district, when given the choice between a QAnon conspiracy theorist like Marjorie Green and a neurosurgeon, they said, I'm going to go with the QAnon conspiracy theorist. <laughs> People, what are we doing? What are we doing? This is, this is who you elected? A QAnon conspiracy theorist? Guys, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, but this is not good. Now, the sad thing is that she's probably going to win because this district is very, very right wing. Um, and I mean, she doesn't even have a platform. Like if you go to her website, she has like six Republican Party talking points that are vague, that don't really speak to any specific policies that she wants to implement, uh, with the exception of her wanting permanent austerity. But she doesn't stand for anything. But what she represents is absolute craziness that the Republican Party, let's be honest, has kind of uh, been uh, pandering to. So for more on this, we go to the New York Times, who writes, In Georgia, Miss Green defeated John Cohen, a neurosurgeon who is no less conservative or pro-Trump, according to the Associated Press, holding a lead of roughly 15 percentage points early Wednesday. The result is likely to unsettle mainstream Republicans who have sought to publicly distance themselves from QAnon supporters running for congressional offices this cycle, even as they quietly support some of them. Now, with Georgia's 14th congressional district, one of the most Republican in the country, likely to vote red in November, Miss Green is all but assured of getting the chance to put into action her talk of rooting out imagined deep state cabal of pedophile Satanists who are trying to take down President Trump. QAnon, a conspiracy theory that has attracted a fervent following since it emerged from the troll-infested fringes of the internet nearly three years ago, has already inspired real-world violence, including the killing of a mob boss. Its supporters are slowly becoming a political force that some Republicans feel they cannot afford to alienate, even as the party struggles to distance itself from racist and anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. More than a dozen candidates who have expressed some degree of support for QAnon are running for Congress as Republicans, their path cleared by Mr. Trump's own espousal of conspiracy theories. On Wednesday morning, Mr. Trump tweeted, Congratulations to future Republican star Marjorie Taylor Greene on a big congressional primary win in Georgia against a very tough and smart opponent. Marjorie is strong on everything and never gives up, a real winner. During his campaign, Mr. Cohen had adopted a slogan that summed up the predicament that Ms. Greene posed for Republicans. All of the conservative none of the embarrassment. She is not conservative. She's crazy, Mr. Cowan told Politico before the runoff. She deserves a YouTube channel, not a seat in Congress. She's a circus act. Now, first of all, let me just say fuck you to Mr. Cowan for saying that she deserves a YouTube channel as if that's a bad thing. Uh, she does not deserve a YouTube channel. Um, it is a legitimate career path. So um, I, I take personal offense 
uh, <laughs> to that comment. Now, let me just say the fact that Republicans are shocked by her victory is a little bit bizarre to me because it shouldn't be surprising that the party who denies climate change, who is anti-vaxxer, who is pushing conspiracy theories about COVID-19 would attract someone like Marjorie Green who was a QAnon conspiracy theorist. And let's be clear, when we call her a QAnon conspiracy theorist, she's not like tacitly endorsing it or playing footsie with QAnon. Like she openly embraces the title of QAnon conspiracy theorist. She literally is a QAnon conspiracy theorist. And guess what? She's going to go to Congress now. And Trump calls her a future star of the Republican Party. Unfortunately, I think he's probably right about that because with how far they're shifting to the right, you know, it's easy to see the path and the trajectory that they're on currently. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't include the video that she tweeted out of her victory party. There were dozens of people there and not a single one of them were wearing masks. In fact, she's also an anti-masker herself. Shocker. And she criticized her Democratic opponent for wearing masks. And uh, she says she's against a national mask mandate. So she's in these large gatherings, she is against masks, and she's going to go to Congress. I mean, are we going to be more rigorous in our testing next year? Because someone like this, who probably doesn't even believe that COVID-19 is a thing, could expose members of Congress and, you know, hundreds of congressional staffers to COVID-19. I mean, this is, uh, I want to say it's scary, but it's not really scary to me. I mean, I mean sure, it's alarming, but... This is exactly what we expect. And like 10 years down the line, we're going to look back and we're probably going to say, wow, remember the days when the most crazy Republican was Marjorie Greene? Because that's what we were doing back in, what was it, 2008, when we saw the rise of the Tea Party and, you know, how famous Sarah Palin became. And we all thought, oh, wow, God forbid anyone like her become the president or take power. And then we got a president, Donald Trump. And so you see the pattern here, right? Republicans keep shifting further and further and further to the right. And when you go so far right, you hit a brick wall eventually. You can't shift any further to the right to where you're just outright fascist or conspiratorial. Like you're in complete Looneyville. And now you're to the point where QAnon candidates are running and they're being relatively successful uh, in their campaigns. One is going to go to Congress. So, I mean, regardless of how much Republicans want to distance themselves from QAnon candidates like Marjorie Greene, I'm sorry, but this is exactly the type of person who you have been courting. And that's unfortunate for all of us because she's going to go into power and vote for policies that are absolutely, probably horrible. So, um, you know, this, uh, this is something. Uh, she is definitely, probably going to be the most psychopathic member of Congress. Like, I think that Louis Gohmert was probably the dumbest member of Congress, but when she gets in, like, they're going to be neck and neck. They're going to be competing. Like, I don't want to say that she's dumber than Louis Gohmert. It's kind of looking that way, though, so I don't I don't know, right? At least, as far as we know, Louis Gohmert, he isn't a QAnon conspiracy theorist, so I don't know. I mean, the fact that it's a reasonable question to ask whether or not someone coming to Congress is dumber than Louis Gohmert in and of itself speaks to how bad of shape we're in as a country. And um, yeah, she's going to stick around. She's going to go to Congress. And um, at least it'll be entertaining, I guess. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous. And he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.